Welcome back to Introduction to Learning and this course. In this learning dialogue, I will demonstrate how to use PECA. I hope in last LXT you might have uh, installed VECA and uh, you have already played with VECA. However, in this LED, I will talk about how to use VECA as a simple data set. When you start VECA in explorer mode, you get this particular screen. The first, the top tabs are the pre-processing that is you can open some data and you can store the data and the tabs clusters, classification and uh, the associate like identifying the rules, association rules between the data. Then also the tab called select attributes. This is to select if you have a lot of independent variables, you can select attributes by automatically. But also you can visualize the data for the analysis. You can load the data in VECA using these four different tabs like um, open URL or open file. Let us do the open file. We already loaded a data called test.arff. ARFF is the format which is used for the VECA. Now, this data is actually a cars data that is there are a lot of features in the car. Uh, there are like 7 features, the 6 features and 7th is the uh, label you want to predict and there are 518 instances of these features. We have data from 518 different cars and uh, there are 7 features. So, let us see the feature 1 that is buying. And uh, there is no missing data, we have all the data that is good and the buying has a 4 different values. Um, it is like 4 different values, it is a nominal type data. The values are high, very high, high, medium and low. Now this data is compared with the class called uh, class like that is the label we have predicted. So, if we can compare visualize this data across different other uh, variables. For example, I am plotting the buying versus safety here. Let us look at the maintenance. Maintenance also have a similar variables like very high something and number of doors in the car is 2, 3, 4, 5 more. Number of persons can sit in the car is like 2, 4 or more or luggage space, safety is high, low, medium and the class. If you look at the class uh, or the safety across all these variables, here we are plotting the variable uh, buying, uh, maintenance, dose, persons, uh, luggage space versus safety. The safety is 3 variables that is medium, high, low. There are like uh, 116 instances of low, 197 instances of uh, medium and 150 instances of high. You can edit the data like if it has any missing values uh, in this particular data we do not have any missing values. If it has any missing values you can edit the data. So, all this data is nominal. So, you can see the values for each of these variables like a buying, maintenance, dose, uh, persons, luggage space, safety and classes. There are 4 classes in this. There are 4 classes in this variable. One is unacceptable, acceptable condition, uh, good condition and very good condition. The aim of this data set is you have a 518 cars data and you have to predict whether the car given the data the car can be uh, classified as unacceptable or uh, acceptable or very good condition or good condition. There are 7 data sets here. So, first one is buying uh, like uh, the chance of um, buying is high, very high. Uh, maintenance is good, very high, medium, not, made, not maintained well. And uh, the number of doors and persons and luggage space and safety. The safety is three, 3 features that is low, medium and high. Given this 6 features we have to predict whether the car is classified as acceptable or unacceptable or good or very good. So, these are the data we obtained from 518 cars also this class of 
classification is also done by the manually uh, the experts in the automobile field. The next uh, important tab which we will do is a classify. We will not deal, I will not talk about the other tabs in this uh, demonstration. In a VECA, we can, uh, the default classifier is 0 that is a baseline classifier. Um, here first we will start with the J48 classifier that in the decision trees. Uh, decision tree is the another algorithm to classify the given variable into 4 classes. Now you have uh, 4 different text options. One is you can use the training set that is the 518 data we use to train the model. Use the same data set to test it. If you do that you get always highest accuracy. Or you can supply the separate test set like use this 518 instance of data to create the model. Then supply another set of data to test it. Or you can split the data by percentage wise. Say I want to use 66 percentage that is two third of data to train this model and use the other one third of data to test the model. However, there is a bias which two third of model you are going to split it. Are you randomly picking this two third of data or this two third of data is the first 66 instance of data. In order to avoid these confusions we can use the cross validation. In a cross validation we split the given data set into set of folds or multiple, uh, multiple groups. Say if I want to, I have a data, I want to do the 10 fold cross validation, you have to split the data into 10 different groups. Let us let us take it very simple cross fold validation example. You have a 30 instance of data and you want to do 3, cross, three fold cross validation. You can split the data into first 10 is the first fold and second 10 data and second group and third 10 data and third group. So, the 3 uh, groups of data each have 10, 10 instance of data. What we will do, we will train the first 20 data that is group 1 and group 2 data to create the model, we test it on the group 3 data. So, the group 3 data is a test data now. In a next iteration, we select the group 1 and group 3 as the training data set, we create a model using group 1 and group 3 as a training data set, then we will test it using the group 2. So, the group 2 also tested now. In a next iteration, we will select group 2 and group 3 as a training model, then we will select group 1 for the testing. So, in this case all this group 1, group 2, group 3 has been used to test the model and the performance of all these groups is indicated as the accuracy or the performance of this particular classifier model. So, 10 fold cross validation or the n fold cross validation is very very useful in order to do the classification. Please use the cross validation technique when you apply the VECA in a course project. You can go and look at the more options uh, like instead of uh, just selecting this 4 given options, you can have more options uh, to uh, high penalizing particular variable or uh, you can you can what are the things you want to look at that you want to output the model or you want to output only the performance all these things can be done. So, we selected J48 as the classifier model, then we want to class predict the class, the nominal variable class of acceptable, unacceptable, very good and good and we start it. Once we start it, we can see the performance here. The first thing is correctly classified instances that is out of 518 instances, 439 instances are correctly classified. So, 439 divided by 518 that is the 83 percent, 84 percentage that is the accuracy of this particular classifier. So, incorrectly classified instances is 79 instances are incorrectly classified. Then kappa statistics is 0.6 is very good value. Uh, kappa actually compares the classifier performance compared to the zero all classifier that is all the baseline classifier. That is if I classify all these values as a A only that is unacceptable condition, what happens? That is the condition here in kappa. So, this particular is 66 
0.66 better than uh, the baseline classifier. So, 0 0.6 is a very good value actually in classification. But uh, in education settings it is good, but in this uh, the setting which we use that is example of call classification is not it may not be better uh, kappa value. Root mean square uh, is a 0 0.22332 2, and uh, this absolute error we can identify. Let us look at the table detailed uh, accuracy by class. So, there is a true positive rate, false positive rate, precision recall. Let us let us below look at the confusion matrix there are 4 values A, B, C, D, A is unacceptable, B is acceptable, C is good and D is very good. Um, this A, B, C, D classified as is the predicted value the actual value is given in the uh, row wise, the column wise is the predicted value. There are 335 cars are classified as unacceptable which is actually unacceptable that is good. There are there are 17 costs classified as unacceptable, but they are actually acceptable that is B equal to acceptable. So, there is a wrong classification of 17 data uh, that is like unacceptable uh, unacceptable uh, sorry the acceptable costs are classified as a unacceptable value. So, this is uh, used to calculate the precision of this classifier. If you look at the precision of the first uh, row is a 0 0.952. So, this value is good. Also, this, the, there are um, 32 other costs which are unacceptable, but which are not able to not classified as uh, unacceptable by the system. So, you can look at it the 335 costs are classified as unacceptable is correct then 30 uh, and 1 and 1 or 32 costs which are actually unacceptable, but are classified as acceptable and good and very good. So, the recall rate is reduced to 0.913. So, the F measure actually computes uh, based on precision and recall then the values given here. So, you can look at uh, the confusion matrix uh, in a Wikipedia and look at the precision recall what is F measure and ROC area. It will be uh, they will be explained it uh, using this similar kind of table. The interesting thing here is um, the B uh, acceptable to acceptable 95 it is good. Let us look at the poor performance that is C. There are uh, 13 plus 1 plus 1 that is 17 cars which are good really good, but our model predicted only one car is a good C equal to 1 and other cars are acceptable and other three, 13 causes are acceptable 3 cars as a very good. So, this is very poor um, this is very poor uh, recall rate. Uh, also very poor uh, precision rate. So, you look at the table uh, the third line um, you can see the very poor recall rate and precision rate like 0 0.059 and 0.125 this is very very poor. And, uh, and the fourth one although it is very less numbers, but it is good in the sense um, out of um, 13 costs or uh, sorry 14 costs 8 plus 1 plus 5 8 costs are classified as very good. So, this is good. So, we might have a better um, the recall rate uh, compared to the other ones. So, in based on this particular classification we can see that the classification of good car is not done good. Bit, good. So, however, compared to all other 3 classes uh, this classifier has done really good job. So, the kappa value is 0 0.66. If you train the different set of classifier we might be able to increase the performance of this, classif this classification task. You can also view the, the model we created because it is a decision tree you can visualize the tree. For example, uh, the visualized uh, decision tree has been created based on safety, safety is the primary parameter here. And if the safety is equal to high, then it checks whether the number of persons in the in the given car. Then, based on that, if it is more, whether what is the value of buying, based on that, it checks the maintenance. Then it goes and classifies based on the value of maintenance, acceptable and unacceptable. Or it can, it is low. Then it again it looks at uh, persons, uh, then the, the luggage space or buying values. 
So, this is the real uh, model which is used to create this classify the given data set. Thank you for listening to the Veka demo and um, I hope you will use uh, Veka in a course project. Uh, we actually uh, have the data and we will explain the data uh, in a nest LED. Uh, use the data and uh, apply it on a Veka and try to predict the uh, students dropout rate in a MOOC. Thank you.